When I was a kid, I had one of those PXL2000 toy camcorders from Fisher-Price. For those of you who don't know, the PXL2000 was a toy camcorder that recorded video on an audio cassette. I know other people have covered the PXL2000 in the past, and you should definitely check out their videos. I'm going to give a brief overview in order to provide some context for this project. This relatively inexpensive camcorder for the time cut a lot of corners in order to reduce the price. The PXL2000 came out in 1987 and only about 400,000 of them were sold for the single year it was on the market. This camera records in monochrome at a CCD, that's the image sensor, resolution of 120 pixels times 90 pixels. The PXL2000 records at right around 429 millimeters per second, or nine times the tape speed used in a normal audio cassette tape deck. For our purposes, we're going to assume it's exactly nine times normal speed. Video is recorded on the left channel of the tape, and the audio is recorded on the right channel. On a chromium dioxide tape, which is usually required in order to preserve the high frequency information of the video signal, a 90 minute tape will hold 11 minutes of content. Well, back in 2005, I digitized all of my audio cassette tapes to MP3 files. But while doing so, when I came across the PXL2000 cassette tapes, I captured those as uncompressed WAV files at a much higher sample rate. I captured the tape signal using a regular cassette deck with an analog line in to my computer's sound card. I captured both the left and right channels, but I only saved the left channel, which contained the video. It was captured as audio on the computer at a 96 kHz sample rate, which was the highest available sample rate on that sound card at the time. Wait till you hear what it sounds like, especially when it's slowed down. Let's have a listen to the audio taken from the tape's video signal. Here it is exactly as it was captured from the tape deck, which is nine times slower than the camera recorded it. And here it is played at the actual speed the camera recorded. Now, Let's listen to it 21 times more slowly than it was recorded so that we can hear some of the details of the signal. Huh, that's kind of creepy. The whistle sound is the tone at the beginning of each frame. The clicking sound is a brief sync pulse at the beginning of each line of video. Let's have a look at the captured signal for analysis. One entire frame of video is around 52,670 samples on average. That gives us just about 61 milliseconds per frame. The tone at the beginning of each frame is around 1,133 samples long at a 96 kilohertz sample rate, so it's about 1.3 milliseconds at the camcorder's tape speed. That's the length of two lines of video in this format. And at actual tape speed, this tone is 16 kilohertz. Each line of video is around 561 samples, so it's almost 650 microseconds in length in real time. Furthermore, having captured the tape signal at a sample rate of 96 kilohertz means that we get 280 pixels of horizontal resolution according to the Nyquist theorem. Each line includes a roughly 24 microsecond sync pulse. That also gives us 92 lines per frame of video when we take the beginning tone and tape speed fluctuation into account. The fact that the tape was about 15 years old at the time it was digitized plays a role in how precise this can be from analyzing it alone. You know that old saying that when the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem begins to look like a nail? Well, at the time I was doing a lot of PHP web development work. And knowing PHP better than any other programming language at the time, 
and being extremely familiar with its graphics library, I used that to build some software to decode the analog signal that I had captured from the PXL2000 cassette tapes. And here's the PHP code I used to convert the digital audio to a series of video frames. And I used FFmpeg to create videos from those frames. So I took the WAV file and I ran it through the program I created, and frame by frame it decoded it. Alright, I tried a few different methods for interpreting the signal as pixels. Here's the plain old direct conversion of audio amplitude to pixel brightness. And here's the amplitude interpreted as a signed value and inverted. And here's another approach using the delta, or difference, in amplitude between two adjacent samples for the output pixel brightness. There's something there, but what is it? Now with this one, you can say that I am totally pulling your leg and trying to pull a fast one on you or just making up dumb stuff. But I'm telling you, when I was a kid, there was this one time where I was watching some footage from the PXL2000. And as I was watching that tape, there was a scene that I didn't remember recording. Just a blank white screen. And then slowly, in the lower left corner of the screen, I kid you not, it looked like an eyeball. Now it could have been anything. At the time we had a pool table in the basement, it could have been a pool ball. I don't know. But whatever it was, it scared the s pipe and hot s out of me. Now there's something there, right? But it sure doesn't look like an eyeball, does it? Well, I recreated what I thought I remembered seeing. I reversed the process I used for converting the audio to images and created PXL2000 audio from an image that I created in order to simulate what I thought I remembered seeing in that creepy scene on the tape as a kid. So here's the audio I generated using that script for the reverse process. My simulation is entirely from memory. The tapes certainly must have deteriorated over the 15 years, especially the high frequency parts of the signal, which would have made up most of the detail in the video. Lots of noise was also introduced due to the weakening tape signal. Whatever was left in that signal is certainly hard to discern. There's something there in the bottom left corner, but the rest of the frame is just noise with nothing else. Well, that's the story about how I took my old PXL2000 cassette tapes, digitized them, and wrote some software to decode the video signal from the audio. It's pretty amazing how an audio cassette tape can actually hold analog video. It's very low resolution, but it's still pretty cool nonetheless. Well everyone, I hope you found this at least a little bit interesting. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care. I'm really glad I held on to these things.